This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, and we're preparing to live broadcast the Texas Wireless Summit in a couple weeks. And today, we're with the co-organizer, Edison Tomas. Edison, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be here, and thanks for uh, coming. Tell us a bit about your role uh, at WNCG. Sure, yes. So I am one of the faculty of, of WNCG. Uh, WNCG, uh, the Wireless Networking Communications Group, is a research center here at the Department of Electric and Computer Engineering. Uh, we're about 24 faculty, and I'm one of them. And we focus on a variety of different um, areas of research. Uh, 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 big emphasis on, on communications and wireless networking, but we also have uh, experts in machine learning, in sensing, um, in a number of different domains. Well, this year's title is Connectivity and Sensing at the Human-Centric Frontier. Is that right? That's right. right. That's right. How did you come up with that theme? Right. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this year's theme is really focused on this uh, space of uh, human-computer interaction, which we refer to as human-machine interfaces as well. And uh, it, it is really about sensing and, and the computation and, and the communication that takes place uh, when we work on a variety of different applications around uh, human-centered computing in general. And, uh, and this is really an evolution from, uh, from last year's team, which was on AI and the mobile device. Um, so this was a natural extension, we thought, and uh, it's a topic that I think is very much um, in vogue. It's, it's, it's um, uh, you know, mobile devices and wearable devices and wearable computing is just very present in our lives. Um, and uh, a lot of the underlying technologies are uh, based on the work that we do in our research, we now have the expertise here in WNCG, uh, very diverse faculty doing research in a lot of these different areas. So we thought this would be uh, an interesting theme, a rich theme that would be exciting for, for all of our uh, members and also you know, the, uh, the, the audience of the Texas Wireless Summit. Edison, what does the future of human computing and sensing look like? Right, that's a, that's a very good question. So over the last 10 years, we've had mobile devices and uh, clearly now mobile devices are everywhere and pervasive. And we see wearable computing, for example, being one of the primary uh, thrusts in terms of research and technology um, and, and usability that we'll see in the future. And so this is one of the areas that we're exploring this year's theme, of course. Um, and um, it is, it is uh, a very exciting space. Uh, we, we have uh, work uh, here at UT uh, that will be highlighting during the event that involves um, doing uh, sensing both um, outside of the body and also inside of the body, which is exciting. Another space that we're very interested in that, that touches on uh, your question is the space of augmented reality and virtual reality, which is again uh, an area that has been sort of brewing for many, many years, but now we're finally starting to get some fundamental pieces of technology that actually allow us to create some user experiences that really tie to some real use cases out there. Um, these are a few examples of, of uh, areas that we believe represent this future of human-machine interaction, human-computer interaction uh, that um, uh, we'll be highlighting during the event, and I think it's really what is uh, taking place out in the real world, so it's very connected to reality. Mm -hmm. uh, 5G technology is in the news most every day today, even though it's not really commercially right. available everywhere. Um, how will 5G play into this notion of a, a human um, uh, computing frontier? Right. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I was just bringing up this topic of, of uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. You know, today, um, when, you, when you see uh, people using virtual reality systems, uh, usually they have some kind of headset on and they're completely connected. You know, they're wired to a computer. And uh, you know, we believe that the real experience of, of, of virtual reality or the potential virtual reality will be really unlocked, unleashed when we can be completely uh, wirelessly moving around with, with headsets that uh, allow us to interact with the world um, without any latency when we move our heads. Uh, we can see uh, you know, the, the, the information is, 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 is following exactly where we're looking at it and, and so on. So, um, it's critical that we, we advance these technologies in terms of communication so that we provide a user experience that is, number one, doesn't make people sick because that's one of the problems with these headsets um, and, um, and, and, and this problem of latency uh, and, and also um, you know, being able to, to, to uh, realize new 
new scenarios and new experiences with, this, with these technologies. How does the work that you're doing here with your students connect to solving those specific problems? Right, so in my work specifically, so my area of research is um, building um, uh, computational models of human health and human behavior from, from sensor data. And so we are doing a lot of research thinking about how we can understand more about people's activities in the real world, uh, people's physiology, and how that impacts their long-term health in various different ways. And so uh, one of the things that we'll be talking about during this event is um, I'll be highlighting some of my research, which will be on thinking about um, going beyond the, the current state of wire, uh, wearables in, in that uh, right now we have wearable devices that are on the body. And uh, we're spending a lot of time now thinking about how can we sense the, uh, the body from within? How can we do computation, for example, inside the body? And so we have a few different uh, applications that we're going to be demonstrating. And, um, and, and, but this is in, in my specific case for my specific research. Um, and, and, and others, uh, we'll be talking about uh, uh, some advances in areas like uh, you know, virtual reality and augmented reality and some fundamentals on, on those areas as well. Mm -hmm. Let's walk through some of the, 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 the highlight speakers and companies that will be participating in the event. Sure, yes. So um, starting with our keynote, so we have uh, uh, Joe Paradiso from MIT. Uh, he's, a, he's a professor at the MIT Media Lab, and he's been doing, um, you know, groundbreaking work in the space of sensing and human-machine uh, interfaces for, for many, many years. Um, so he's, he's going to be our keynote. We have uh, uh, two speakers from Qualcomm um, who will be talking quite a bit about uh, advances in 5, 5G and how these advances connect to the theme of this year's event. Um, we have uh, some keynote. Um, sorry, we have some talks on um, wearable computing. We have uh, um, my co-organizer Nan Shulu and, um, and uh, Wei Gao from, from Caltech will be talking about uh, um, soft electronics and, and epidermal electronics. We'll have two speakers on the um, area of uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, from, from Facebook and from uh, Magic Leap, uh, two of the leading uh, companies developing, pushing these technologies uh, further. Uh, we'll have also uh, representatives from, um, from Samsung, from Digital Health at Samsung. So it's going to be a very rich event. I, I'm sure that uh, uh, everyone will have uh, lots to think about and um, uh, lots of interesting directions to explore. Uh, when we bring uh, this group of speakers together. I noticed you had General Motors and Facebook and AWS also involved. Where do they fit into this human-centric uh, frontier? That's right, yeah. So uh, the, the, the panelist that we're going to have from GM is, is someone who's got a lot of experience in developing systems from an from a, um, implementation's point of view in terms of augmented reality and virtual reality and developing experiences for GM. Um, and, um, and, and we also have Facebook, who's developing you know, their Oculus. Oculus division is, is you know, doing some of the foundational work. It's one of the leading platforms on, on virtual reality systems. And so um, it will be, I think, uh, uh, a, a very enriching uh, panel in that we'll be able to talk to them about um, you know, the future of virtual reality and augmented reality, mixed reality, both from the perspective of the companies developing the, the technology, but also from the perspective of, of those who are using the technology to develop new experiences and new scenarios. Well, I'll, I'll close by talking about privacy. Privacy is a, a, a big issue That's right. when it comes to mobile phones and people's experiences. Um, how can engineering uh, uh, build in privacy solutions today for that kind of unknown future? Right, that's a, that's a, that's a wonderful question. And, uh, and I'll answer it in, in two different ways. So first of all, there's there is uh, privacy at the level of sensing, so there are different ways in which we can, we can create more privacy-sensitive systems uh, when it comes down to sensing. So uh, I can have a sensor that is collecting data, but it's not really sending this data anywhere. It's doing all the processing of that sensitive data locally on the device, right, for example. And then only uh, certain bits of information that might be relevant to an application, but that are not really uh, privacy um, concerning 
um, all, all, all of those, they, would, they, would, uh, they wouldn't be uh, sent anywhere else. Um, so this is from the point of view of sensing, then there's the point of view of also machine learning. There are lots of different techniques that we are developing, in fact, here in our group about, uh, about this problem and thinking about how we can uh, process data in ways that um, allow us to um, not keep a lot of uh, sensitive data aggregated in one place. Uh, we can do some computation with parts of the data um, and then and push out uh, findings from that computation, uh, but in a privacy protecting way. Um, there are techniques that we've been uh, exploring, such as federated learning, for example, uh, uh, a little bit of differential privacy, so different techniques that, that we, can, we can apply to, to this problem, but it's definitely front and center to, to this work, and, uh, and that's why we really like to describe this year's theme as, as human-centered uh, computing and sensing and um, in interfaces because I think it's, it's very important to think about this, this aspect of the research that we're doing. Well, Edison, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday, November 12th here at this auditorium. If you can't join us in person, please tune in to RCR Wireless News. Uh, we'll be live broadcasting this event. Edison, thanks again. It's great thank to you see so you. much. It was a pleasure.